What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, so we actually got something in today. I'm really excited to show you guys. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, drop a comment. Uh, but today we're going to be kind of doing a little bit of an update overview of where we're standing. Uh, we got the greenhouse kind of set up and rolling. It's starting to get cold here. And we're even, we have an incubator now. Are you all ready to check it out? So we actually have, it's the auto egg incubator. And so right now it's set at about 38.2 degrees Celsius. Um, absolutely in love with it. Great value for the money. And it even comes with a little booklet to kind of help, uh, you know, first, first time beginners uh, learn about it. We also got our dehydrator running. I'm pretty sure you can hear that. We're still getting produce. Um, we've actually been dehydrating a lot of stuff. Um, got a lot of a lot of squash going on here this is wonderful uh, we just throw it in the crock pot it's ready to go doesn't lose flavor lasts forever um, but uh, yeah so we actually got the eggs started from our Rhode Island Reds that we're breeding here uh, yesterday so in about a month's time we'll probably go ahead and set up a brooder uh, show you guys what we're doing with that uh, but we're gonna go ahead and jump to the outside and uh, we'll see you there so we are outside it's been a little bit rainy a little bit cold um so we're gonna go ahead and show you guys what we've been doing in the garden oh starting to drizzle again so in the garden um our peach tree and our pineapples we went ahead and just threw some tarps over it just to kind of help keep them warm uh not the best setup but it works um uh, we have been harvesting predominantly off of our, you know, outside garden over here, uh, where everything's at. You can see we still got the plants going. It's not cold enough to where they're going to die yet, but we are getting our winter crop started. So that way we're producing during winter. So uh, I'm sure most of y'all remember this. Uh, we do have a couple more plants than we originally had, uh, some stuff growing out. This is actually our heat source. Uh, it's not gonna be touching the plastic or anything, but it emits heat. So it, as long as I close our vents, kind of you can see behind me up top, it, it, you know, it provides heat and the heat doesn't really escape. We also have a fan going full blast, just circulating air in here. Kind of uh, last year, last season during winter, we had a mite infestation. So we're trying to keep that from happening again. And we also, I did say I didn't want another barrel of water in here, but unfortunately I ended up having to put one specifically because we're growing out duck duckweed, water lettuce, and uh, hopefully some guppies and water snails. Um, I had access, or, or hopefully we're gonna have access to our water culture and start getting our aquaculture set up and some IBC totes. Um, so we're just kind of getting uh, like a prepped system you know a balanced water started so cycling that system becomes significantly easier um, so that, that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we got going on in the chicken shed say good morning Fred oh he's quiet now normally he's real real excited so we did have our smaller aquacultures get set up here um, we actually had plants on in that uh, it was predominantly like basils and stuff Chickens ate it instantly. They didn't give it a chance. Uh, they do have snails and fish in here, but the reason we started growing duckweed is that kelp is actually a great mineral just across the board for chickens and most animals. It's actually really nutritious. Um, so we're trying to breed it out in, an, in another area so we can slowly start to move in large amounts and it'll actually take over these little ponds here. And of course, as always, they have like two or three other waterers, a total of almost 10 gallons worth of water. Um, so we are no longer brooding uh, here. Our brooders, they were just not doing a good job. Uh, so, you know, we went ahead and altered to what benefited us the most. Uh, I don't know if I've shown you guys in here, but we got all our perches and everything set up. And I also just have a light just kind of thrown up there. So they can warm up if they want to, but they can also, you know, kind of back away and nest and do whatever whatever they prefer for the most part. Um, of course, we have our, our dust box. Um, you know, we added some tin up there, keeping it nice and nice and dry. And our maggot bucket has been doing phenomenal. 
I'm actually going to be cleaning it out, showing you guys what I do with that on a separate video. So if you want to see that, go ahead and check it out. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's going to be nasty. So if you have a sensitive stomach, I probably wouldn't. Um, and, you know, we're also getting, still getting produce from everywhere. You can see they, they absolutely love it over here. They hang out here all the time. Uh, they've been dragging some of the, the produce out and everything. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. That's what winter prepping looks like for us. Uh, it took me about a day or so to kind of get everything caught up. Um, we did end up getting the rest of our garden uh, barrier up, but we don't have the mulch. So ultimately what's going to happen is the mulch that you see laying around here and uh, the mulch that's in there in a few months is all going to get cleaned out and then placed onto the garden as our mulch layer. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, appreciate you for stopping in, uh, checking it out, and we'll update you the next chance we get. And if you have the stomach for it, we'll see you on the maggot bucket cleaning video. Bye, peace, be kind out there, and have a good one.